my tarot friends, Justin Michael. Welcome back to my channel, and welcome, of course, if it's your first time visiting. I appreciate you, as always. Uh, very excited to show you these uh, two decks that I just received today uh, from one E. Renaud in uh, Marseille, France. All of his information is going to be below if you're interested in any of these decks. I've showed many Eve Renaud decks uh, on my channel. I've also had Eve uh, himself on my channel uh, for an interview, which is great, which I'll also link below. He's just an absolute gentleman, and um, his collection for me is like the gold standard for Tower de Marseille, honestly. Um, they're all facsimiles uh, or facsimile-ish. Like, um, you know, he does minimal work, like additions to the artwork uh, he repairs just some things you know and enhances it slightly but it's real the standard that they live up to is just it's uh, really impressive it's like museum level in my opinion um he also has a great variety of decks you know i mean so many so if you go on the marseille heritage website you can look at all the amazing decks that he has for sale but you can also learn because he has pictures of all of them with uh, information about the card makers. It's really just, he is a prince to the Tower de Marseille community. I really believe that. Um, so uh, I ordered the Joseph Voucher because, you know, I wanted to get this. It was completely different. You know, as I said, he's a card maker from Marseille. Um, but I never order just one deck from Eve because of shipping, you know. Um, I always order at least two. And so that's what I did here. And Jacques Burdell was the only Eve Renaud deck that I did not have in my collection of, of decks that he's currently printing and has printed in the last few years, you know, that he has in his catalog. Uh, other than that, I have all of them, um, I think. Uh, he does have some new ones coming out. Uh, he did a reprint of the Pierre Madinet, um, which I own. It's the 1709. I don't know if they did anything different in this new edition. Um but this is available, once again, if you wanted the Pierre Madinet, which is an absolute classic. It's a beautiful deck. I can briefly show you this uh, in the video as well if I have some time. Um, but it, it's it's an absolute must, um, especially if you're a fan of, like, you know, the classic Tower de Marseille. Uh, it's it's one of the earlier Type 2. I think it's the earliest Type 2, actually, from Dijon. Um, and so, yeah, and, and uh, he also has, coming out, um, Francois Chosen. Which is which I know for a fact because he told me on, you know on my channel that he's completely read it's like a new deck he said those were his words um, so it's different from the from the initial one which is uh, I also have um, but so the Jock Bordell is the one we're going to look at first uh, the Joseph Foucher is um, you know it's a it's a standard tower to Marseille but I have uh, some commentary on that uh, I'll explain that. In, in a second, but um, the reason I didn't get Jacques Burdell right away, or, or that it took me so long, is because he's the grandson of Claude Burdell. Um, Claude Burdell is, you know, it's up there with Nicolas Convert and, and and like you know Jean de Dal, in my opinion, very well known card maker. He was born in France. Uh, he moved. He he um, actually did his apprenticeship in Leon, which Leon was one of like the chief exporters of tarot in his day um, in the early days of tarot to Marseille. So, and it's interesting because he brought some of that to Switzerland, it seems because he did his apprenticeship. I'll, I'll read you the, you the thing, but um, you know, like Le Leon is mostly known for like type one tarot, like the John Dodal, for instance, is printed in Leon. And so is the Nicholas Rolchon. So, and a few others, but it's just really interesting. And then he moved to um, Switzerland. And Jacques Burdell was the son of Xavier, I think, Xavier Burdell. Um, and this is the grandson of Claude Burdell, and they took over the shop. And so uh, it's a very similar tarot. There, but I'm actually, now that I saw it, I'm glad I got it because it's it's somewhat different. But let's take a look at it. So let me pull out the Claude Burdell first. First off, these are the best boxes, you know, the classic Eve boxes um you know that they come in and uh you have some information on there and not all the decks come wrapped in paper but the claude burdell happens to i don't know what you know what determines whether a deck comes with paper or not i guess maybe it's the availability of the original label i don't know um but i love when they come with them it's just so nice um and so we have both of these decks uh come with the paper 
and so Claude Burdell is pretty well known. I mean, in the, in the Tarot de Marseille world, um, there are a few uh, mass market decks uh, sort of molded after Claude Burdell, um, and you know, it's just he's he's very much mentioned. And you know, when I think of Swiss decks, I think of um, Claude Burdell. So this is uh, the Jacques. This is the Claude. Um, yeah, this is the Jacques Burdell here. No, it took me a minute to figure it out, but I had to look at it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, looking at it, it's very, very similar. Not too much different, um, but let's look at the backs. Uh, the backs are different. But, I mean, other than the, the rounded faces, you know, uh, which is what uh, Eve uh, actually says. You know, let me read this really quickly. Okay, Jacques Burdell, 1784 to 1862, was born in Freiburg, Switzerland, grandson of Claude Burdell, a French card maker. At the origin of this famous line of master card makers, Jacques takes advantage of the achievements of his grandfather and his father, Xavier Burdell, who was able to help create this tarot uh, initial XB, Xavier Burdell, on the card seven, Le Chariot. Uh, but also CT on the Two of Cups, which indicates the probable use of various molds. 1804 for the major cards, and 1813 for the cups. And then here's... So what they're saying is there was two engravers of this deck, is what it looks like, you know, because there's multiple initials. So you have um, Xavier Burdell carved a portion of it, um, the you know, the trumps at least, and then that was in 1802, or 1804, rather, in 1813, the cups and deniers were upgraded. So maybe there were some broken blocks, whatever. But uh, it's interesting. It's something to talk about, too, uh, as we go here, just to kind of uh, go through it. But the very similar tarot. I'm not going to take too much time here. I was going to show you the backs. Very kind of standard pattern, you know. Um, I've never seen the original backs. I don't know what they look like. Uh, but they, you know, they're probably the original backs are close to. Um very, very similar. This is as type 2 Terra de Marseille as it gets. You know what I mean? And so uh, the one thing I did know, so we have Jacques on the right here, and then we have Claude Bredeau on the left, the class of Claude Bredeau. Um, the eyes and the faces in the Jacques Bredeau are just so cool and so interesting. Uh, reminds me a little of the Midnight Tarot, which I just reviewed, which has a lot of interesting little quirks that are synchronous with this deck. And I don't know if it was direct influence or it just happened to be carried over but uh, i'll sh i'll show you what i mean um in a minute but uh you know the emperor pope and lovers all pretty standard very similar aside from the faces lots of googly eyes in this one okay so now we have the charrier L L charrier uh claude burdell here cb as the uh, engraver um, and he has Le Chariot, which is interesting, and so does uh, Jacques Bredeau. You know, that's something you see in Type 1 decks a lot. You don't see that often in Type 2. It's usually Le Chariot with a T. Um, Claude Bredeau having apprenticed in Leon, maybe he brought that with him. I don't know why he chose to use that. But funnily enough, uh, in the Midnight Tarot, which I just uh, reviewed the other night, he also uses Le Chariot. Uh, which is pretty cool, you know. Um, so that would be interesting if it was just a, um, a coincidence, but um, I don't know. I don't know that to be the case. Uh, but and then in the Jacques Burdell, we have XB, which is uh, Xavier Burdell, who was the son of Claude Burdell. Um, and so he obviously, you know, carved the trumps, or at least this card anyway. I mean, who knows? Uh, I'm sure there are experts that kind of work that stuff out to look at the the style and so forth, but the um, some of the pips were, um, particularly the deniers and the cups were um, done by another engraver. So we'll take a look at that uh, when we get there. Um, we standard wheel, the force uh, on the box. Interesting of Jacques Burdell. We have a stamp here also, which uh, I didn't really get a good look at the box uh, when we were. Um, the first King started, but this stamp is basically it's an export stamp. It means that this deck was sold, um, you know, for uh, export. So that that's all that is. I just wanted to point that out. And I actually love when there's stamps, um, you know, because it's just a nice piece of the history. Okay, so when I reviewed um, 
this deck the other day. Um, Gergo's deck. I noticed that he had a bare foot, uh, the Hangman. I didn't realize that the Hangman in the Millennium also had bare foot. You know? Uh, and so I was kind of trying to dig around, like, where did I see that at? You know, and it, it seemed vaguely familiar to me. And then I flipped through the Pierre Chaminade, just happened to be looking at that deck that day. And I noticed the Pierre Chaminade had a bare foot, but red paint over it. And so that's what we see here too, in both decks. Um, I don't know why that is, why they covered it in, in paint, probably, you know, just kind of careless, um, stenciling, you know, doing it real quick. Um, you know, this, I mean, this, this was done really quickly. Um, but I mean, it, it's interesting that it's there and it's there in both, you know? So, but I don't know because I mean, if they're still coloring this and they're colored in both decks, that must just must have been a thing to, to color over it in red, but you can see it here in Clover Dill. It's there too. It's just not as easy to pick up. So I never noticed that before. Because you got to really look at it to see, but in the Jacques Bredo, it's a little more noticeable. But the fact that it's in both, I mean, that just, it doesn't seem like it would be an accident, you know? Um, so, I mean, I don't know what that's all about, but it's interesting. And so, you know, obviously, Wilfred Houdin, you know, is he's the one who has done the restorations here in these decks. Uh, he's the one who created the Millennium, which is also, you know, one of the decks available through Eve. Um you know, he put a bare foot in his deck, and that's what Gergo told me that he got it from um, the Millennium because he really loves the Millennium deck. And so, you know, but it's interesting. There's a lot of kind of interesting quirks in the Jacques Bordel that I noticed that seem to be almost synchronous with the Midnight Tarot. I don't know, um, like especially the eyes and so forth, just kind of reminds me of it a little bit. But uh, very fun deck, you know. And I'm glad to have it. The tower here is very different. You can see. Yeah, so this is something that you see more typically in Type 2. And this is almost close to the Type 1 uh, style, you know, in that it, it looks to be, but it looks like it's coming out of the tower in Type 1, whereas this is coming from the sun to the tower. Um, and the same thing here. But and anyway, I just wanted to look at that. Um, <clears throat> Uh, not that big of a deal, just something, a little nerd thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, just a really cool little deck. The moon, very similar. The sun, same style, you know, that very iconic Claude Brudel, which, by the way, the sun in the Midnight Tarot also is like that as well. So, very cool. Anyway, just happy to have this in my tarot library. Yeah, well, I mean, look at the eyes in the, in the Le Mat, you know. Very, very cool. And um, the pips are basically I mean, the same, you know, uh, or very similar anyway. Okay. So, I mean, the courts are similar. And uh, I want to show you kind of like the aces. Okay, you have like more of a gothic style chalice uh, in the ace, which in, in the Swiss deck, sometimes you see that kind of rounded... Um, you know, Saborium or whatever it's called. Uh, but the cups are very Swiss in this, you know. Um, and you have CD here, CT rather. So you can see that, that that's what he was talking about with the two cups. That is a different engraver who's done the pips. So, you know, probably just hired a guy to repair the blocks, you know. I mean, it's hard to know why, but, um, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. I really like the Jacques Bredel. I like the colors in this uh, version. And I like the faces, you know, round faces. And just a, a little different than the Jacques Bredel. It's still kind of in that major canon. And let's just look at the um, swords are very, you know, classic uh, in both. And I just want to look at the coins quickly, you know. And I always thought of the, the Claude Bredel was always... A little fancier in terms of the coins. Like, there was something about the coins that I always liked that, you know, just seemed unique to me about Claude Burdell. We had the year 1813, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> well, yeah, that's so we got the Claude Burdell, the Jacques Burdell. I gave you a little taste of it and probably went on talked a little too much about it. So Joseph Foucher, 
Um, this is a whole big deal here because, um, well, this is around the time in, of Convair. Foucher is one of the, the Marseille guys. Uh, Eve um, wanted to print these in Marseille. You know, they say made in Marseille. Uh, and so he found, he shopped around and found a different um, card manufacturer. He couldn't get the boxes that he normally gets, and he had to settle for a tuck box. It's a really nice embossed quality. Like, it's really a high-quality tuck box, but it's still a tuck box. And um, I can't lie and say I'm not disappointed because I love the boxes so much. However, this is still worth getting, I think. Um, you know, like, the box isn't going to make or break it, really. I just, I hope that he figures out how to get those boxes again. But the quality of this talk box is really, really nice. I mean, embossed print and feels so nice. But then again, you look at it and it's dinged up already, you know. Uh, so I hope that he will, um, you know, package these a little carefully too, a little more carefully too, that they're talk boxes. The car quality is different too. It's much thinner. Well, I wouldn't say much thinner, but it's certainly thinner. Than the Claude Bordeaux by a couple of cards, not super, but you know when it comes to his cardstock, it's not always the same anyway. But I did like these a lot. The card quality of the Joseph Foucher. First off, they have almost like a velvety feel to them, uh, or even almost a rose petal finish. Like they feel really, really nice. I don't know how they shuffle yet, but they don't stick together. Not too much. Like they have just enough friction, but they. They slide, um, and they have some weight to them. They feel nice. Um, and these are the backs, which, you know, look adequate. It's kind of another uh, Marseille design. They all kind of look the same to me um, uh, from that period, you know. But this is very uh, Nicholas Colbert. I'm not going to do a compar comparison with this. We're just going to take a look at the images. What I really like is, first off, whoever's doing the printing for this has done a really nice job. The colors look superb uh, on this paper. The paper quality feels good. Um, it's got some, you know, it doesn't feel flimsy. It's nice and thick. Uh, it feels almost a little more playing card-ish than um, previously, you know. Classic Terror de Marseille. I mean... There's nothing extraordinary about this particular deck. I wanted it because, A, you know, um, I like having as many classic historic Tower of Marseilles from Ease as I can get. I just love that they're in my library. They're reliable. You can pull them out as a reference uh, when you really want to know what the image looked like, um, you know. So it's just, it's nice to have. Um, uh, and I, I like them for comparisons as well. You know, Eve's decks for comparisons in videos like this. Um, so, yeah, we have uh, IF there, I think, which is probably Joseph uh, Voucher. Yeah, he's the engraver. So, Joseph Voucher engraved his tarot deck in Marseille at the age of 45, following an apprenticeship begun in 1745 in Bordeaux as a garçon cartier, card maker boy. That's what it translates. Until very recently, only two incomplete copies of this deck were known. One preserved in the Musée de Vaux, Marseille, the other in the Bibliothèque Nationale France in Paris. Recently, Thierry de Polis, a French historian specializing in playing cards, informed us of the existence of a third original copy, to this day the only complete one known in the world. This copy is in excellent condition, belongs to Vincenzo Capuano, Italian professor of history. You know what's funny? I had a, a I had a teacher in high school named Mr. Capuano. So it's funny when they said professor uh, of history of toys. Okay. It is kept at the Museo del Giacatolo or Giacatolo, I don't know, in Naples. I can't remember. Uh, which he found it. Uh, thanks to the mediation of Wilfred Houdin, author of the Tower to Marseille Millennium Edition, with Alfredo Mazzara, M A Z Z A R A. Italian tarologer and filmmaker, the rights have been granted to produce the present edition, thus offering to the public for the first time this faithful reprint of one of the rare, authentic Marseille tarot decks. So it's a special deck in that regard, uh, and that you know, it's the first time it's ever being printed in the modern, in the modern era. But it's very close to Colvert. That's what I was saying. But it's a really nice. It feels really nice. Um, 
you know, and the 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 thing is, I mean, like, I don't know. Maybe it's going to grow on me. I don't like love it. I don't hate it either. It's just not. It's not as charming as like say. Um, it reminds me a little of the Bernadine Suzanne, but it's, I don't know. It just doesn't have the charm that the others have. But uh, here we have the um, Temperance is spelled Ten Parents. Also in Burdell, too, I think it's spelled like that. Probably didn't point that out because I was blabbering, but. And then we have <sighs> the Devil. So, yeah, you know, classic Tower to Marseille. Nothing extraordinary about this one. It's, I mean, I'm looking forward to the Francois show. I'm glad I got it, obviously, to have it, you know, uh, for my library. But, you know, it's to me, it's not like the most uh, special of, of um, these historic tarot. But uh, it does remind me a lot of uh, Suzanne Bernadine, though. Or Ber Bernadine Suzanne, I should say. I always want to make Bernadine a Susie. But yeah, I mean, if you are interested in the Tower de Marseille, I mean, like, it's a classic. The colors look really good in this, though. That I will say. I mean, like, in terms of the clarity of the colors. Um, you know, they did a nice job printing this, and the quality is great. I wish, I hope he goes back to the boxes, though. I say that. Um, you know. Just your average Terra de Marseille, really. Very calm, verish. But, uh, yeah, that's Joseph Fetcher. So the Pierre Medinet is the other one that he has uh, uh, restocked. I don't know if he's done any improvements to it. It's very possible he made some uh, improvements here and there. I do know Wilfred likes to do that. Uh, also comes with that really nice paper. I don't know if these are in order. Probably not. Um, so, oh, they are. Okay. So Pierre Menne is like, you know, he's known for his, like, the faces are really, like, cute and pleasant in this. Uh, and it's a beautiful deck. It really is. It's a beautiful deck. Those are the backs. Um I have a couple versions of the Pure Madine. It really is. It, it's not like my super favorite, but it's up there. It's one of my favorites for sure. Um, I have some friends who it's like their top deck, you know, but. It is pretty. The colors are really soft in this too, in this version, you know, but. Um, no, it's, it's all about what you like, really. And they were kind of in order. Oh, so he's fully shoe, uh, fully shooed, I guess would be the word. I almost said shoothed, like, like clothed, shoothed. I can't even say it. Justice. So, you know, and then you have Lay Shabri Ward here too, as well. So, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, what do I know? You know, it's, I don't think, I think it was interchangeable. It's not like uh, when you see like Le Fou versus Le Mat. You know, in type one, you usually see Le Fou, F O U, instead of Le Mat. Uh, that's like one of the characteristics of type one and type two. I don't think that was. For some reason, I was thinking it was. I don't know. I don't know everything about TDM. Um, yeah, so, you know, the Pierre Med name. Classic TDM, though, otherwise. Uh, and one of the earliest ever printed of the Type 2 variety. So, um, But yeah, he has that. And then he has the French, Francois shows and coming up. He said it's going to be like carpet bombing. He's going to have a whole bunch coming out. And I'm looking forward to that. And I will always support Eve. If you have any questions, um, any comments, uh, you want to leave anything below, just please feel free to reach out. And uh, thanks for tuning in, uh, everyone. And until next time, everybody, love and peace. Bye.